Good morning, listeners and viewers. Happy Easter to all. Christ is risen. And your Hallelujah. response? He is truly risen. Hallelujah. 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 So I hope you really did receive a resurrection. You really received that joy that comes with this wonderful season of Easter. We are quite aware, many of the challenges fighting against the centrality of our faith, but the Lord always raises up a remnant, and it will always happen, whatever God wills, that this celebration must take place and will take place all the time. So I pray that you would have received and that you'll be happy to call in to express you know, your own experience of Easter this year and really what God has been doing in your heart. So we have Father Patrick. I thought he might have stayed away today, but <laughs> I guess the fire in his bones and he can't keep quiet. <laughs> As he has shown us that um, it doesn't matter. He has to keep, keep at it, strike the iron and keep it, keep it running. So we thank God for him. We know it's been a hectic um, time for you, Father. But as um, we know that you keep your eye where it ought to be on the one who leads you in your faith and we too are invited to do the same so we thank you for making it possible to be here this morning and invite you as usual to lead us in a prayer well good morning rutina and Dwayne and anna we have a visitor this morning <laughs> robert <laughs> yes passing through yes and um, derek all, all of you in the studio especially those of you who make the, this program possible for all those who view all those who you are viewing all over the world. And to you, beloved brothers and sisters, participants in this program, very, very blessed morning to you. Very happy Easter. And I hope that you and your families are still feeling the joy of being blessed with the resurrection of Jesus, the Son of our God and the Savior Jesus Christ. So we want us to begin this program this morning. We do two prayers calling on the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us. And the second it is to do the Regina Chili. In our churches now, many, many churches have no bell for ringing to remind us we are, there, are, um, there are times of day for prayer. We always have to pray constantly. Some churches don't have the bells, some churches, the bells are silent. Modern man seem not to care about what we should carry with us from day to day. And the care we must take in carrying it, which is the faith. So the world may know, the world may know that Jesus came and he came for all mankind to believe in him, to have eternal life. So we'll begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill and the, the hearts heart of your faithful. Kindle, kindle within us the power of your, your love. Send, send forth, forth your, your Spirit, Lord, Lord, and we shall be recreated, and, and you shall, shall renew the face of the, of the earth. earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, granted by the same Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, we, we may be truly wise. wise and every rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Queen of Heaven, rejoice. <coughs> Alleluia. Alleluia. But Jesus, whom you merited to bear, Alleluia. is risen as he said. Alleluia. Pray for us to God. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O God, who through the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you have given joy to the world, granted through, through his resurrection, we may attain to the joys of eternal life to the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to end the prayer by singing, Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, for he has risen. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore. Sing hallelujah, for he has risen. 
my Jesus is alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. He's alive. And just <laughs> before we continue the program, which will focus today on our Easter celebrations and why it is so important for everyone. Remember, we not, did not just say for the Catholic, for everyone. Just want to read to you something here from Pope Benedict XVI at the Mass during the day. He said, we know that Christ has truly risen from the dead. Yes, indeed. This is the fundamental core of our profession of faith. This is a cry of victory that unites us all today. And if Jesus is risen and is therefore alive, who will ever be able to separate us from him? Who will ever be able to deprive us of the love of him who has conquered hatred and overcome death? The Easter proclamation speaks throughout the world with the joyful song of the Alleluia. Let us sing it with our lips. Let us sing it above all with our hearts and our lives, with a manner of life that is unleavened, that is to say, simple, humble, and fruitful in good works. The risen one goes before us, and he accompanies us along the parts of the world. He is our hope. He is the true peace of the world. That's Pope Benedict the sixteenth. The sixteenth. Yes. He's yes. very profound, very, very deep. Oh yes. And and you know the, the, the whole idea, the whole the depth of what we are celebrating. It's so important that this really reaches our heart. Mm -hmm. Because the we can miss it, the core of our being. So, listeners and viewers, with Father Patrick, we will be sharing on our Easter celebrations and its importance for everyone. He always likes to recap as a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to um, just remind you again what has happened. Because, you know, things could just happen and we probably could miss it, even if it is happening. So... Our last program, which we did on the 19th, we are already in April, and it's the second. We dealt with Holy Week, and the uh, Father continued to help us to understand the importance of Holy Week as the climax of the season of Lent, that season of repentance, and he always stresses newness of life. In that program, we were reminded that Lent was the third season in the church's liturgical year, consisting of six and a half weeks, that is 40 days, and that in Holy Week, the passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ highlighted. Holy Week began on Palm Sunday, we call Passion Sunday, and ended on Gloria Saturday with the Easter Vigil and the proclamation of the resurrection of Jesus. The liturgies during Holy Week were talked about in our last program, and we were all urged to do our best to attend those liturgies, to participate, and to bring the children along. For there was no substitute for the witness and formation of our children. It is hoped that all of you, all of us, have had a memorable and grace-filled Holy Seat Week and your children too. Just to recap. Okay? Mm -hmm. So today we are just going to, Father will share with us on this season, this very important season of Easter. And some people think it is finished already with the weekend. <laughs> but Easter is a season. And this is Easter Tuesday. We are still in the octave of Easter. It is something that we need to understand. Mm -hmm. And that's why the next Sunday will be the second Sunday of Easter. Easter it's a long day. You know, this morning I was looking and it says, this is the day the Lord has made. Mm -hmm. And we think it's just today, Monday. But the day is Jesus Christ. The day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad because Jesus is the day. He is the light. Mm -hmm. He is the one who is sent by the Father to help us and to save us. So many mm -hmm. things are happening. And look at the time that we are celebrating Easter. We should not despair. We really mm -hmm. should not lose hope because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He has conquered sin, death, and the grave, and he reigns, and he's alive. Oh, yes, yes, he is alive. 
and sisters and brothers in Christ, <clears throat> all of you are viewing, all you listeners on Good News, Catholic, Catholic Radio, and uh, the other platforms. Yes. Easter is truly, truly a season, you say, of great joy. I also would, um, what Routine has just said, that uh, we are in the first week of Easter, and uh, this is the octave. That is the first day. Octo is eight. So octave is the first eight days of Easter. And octave is treated as the day of the resurrection. So, so uh -huh. unbounded is the joy of the church. That it takes eight days, <laughs> as it were. It takes eight days to celebrate with great joy mm -hmm. Jesus rising from the dead. But not just eight days, but the first eight days is the day when we should feel it in our bones. What blessings that we received on Easter night, had we gone there on Easter Sunday itself as we participated in the liturgy. So first of all, I'd like to remind you that Easter is the fourth season in the church's liturgical year. If Lent is the third season, then of course Easter, which follows Lent, is the fourth season. Mm -hmm. And Easter consists of seven weeks, seven full weeks mm -hmm. plus a day. And seven, seven are 49, and <laughs> the next day, that's 50 days. So Easter consists of 50 days. We will try to remember that. Mm -hmm. 50 days, not one day, not Sunday gone. And, um, you know, we had a holiday because of that. And even when the holiday, Easter is finished. No, we celebrate for 50 days, 50 days. We are celebrating. So Easter season <clears throat> begins with, with um, Easter Sunday. And then that season includes the celebration of the solemnity, the, the celebration of ascension. After 40 days with the disciples, Jesus ascended into heaven. Mm -hmm. You see that in the creed. You pay attention, what, what we celebrate is always professed. Professed from the heart, professed in the lip, on the lips. So the 40th day of, East, of Easter time would be the day of the resurrection, would it be the day of ascension. Mm -hmm. And of course, 10 days later, it will be Pentecost. So 40 plus 10 is 50. 50 yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Pentecost, brings an end, it brings a curtain down to, upon that season. It doesn't bring the curtain down on the reality, which is the resurrection of Jesus, but it brings it down on the fourth season. And it then comes, of course, ordinary time. So we keep that in mind. Easter season begins on, on Easter Sunday, and it ends on Pentecost, a period of 50 days or seven full weeks. Seven full weeks. Mm -hmm. Sunday to Sunday. <laughs> okay? And with Pentecost, we celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon Our Lady, upon the Church, Upon the apostles and the church. All it is, the apostles and the church. A pouring of the Holy Spirit. We, sometimes we would say descent, but descent is such a mild word. <laughs> God poured out His Spirit. And He poured out water from the vessel. God poured out His Spirit to affect the lives of all those upon whom the Spirit came, and that is celebrated at Pentecost. Now, it cannot be denied, it cannot be denied 
We attempt to deny, well, we, die, we deny what we don't know because those who experience, those who have had an experience, are the ones to say whether the thing is so or not. And they'll always attest to the experience. So I'm saying it cannot be denied that those who fervently part participated in the Lenten spiritual exercise, keeping Lent as Lent should have been kept with the fasting and praying and alms giving and doing, making an attempt for the newness of life, repentance and making an attempt for the newness of life, then, <clears throat> then of course, Easter, which follows Lent, is the most joyful time of year for them. It's the most joyful time. It's the undeniable. For the people who participated in Lent, as it should be, would never forget the joys of Easter, Easter. time and mm -hmm. always look forward to Easter mm -hmm. every year of their life. This joy touches the core or the depth of such believers or such persons, the core, the, the inner being, and there is nothing to replace that joy, and there is nothing to compare with that joy. All the human experience can compare with it. Of that joy, Jesus says, in John chapter 16, verse 22, B, and I ask Sam, I'm routine that to read that. And also John chapter 15, verse 11, and then who's this? In John, then I'm in John chapter 14, verse 18. I just ask her to read the first two. So 1622? 1622B. Mm -hmm. But I, Jesus said, but I will see you again, etc. We, we have from, from Rutina. Okay. But I shall see you again, and your hearts will be full of joy, and that joy no one shall take from you. Yes. Jesus, having died, will come back again and experiencing him again will bring such joy that no one can remove that joy from us. Let us hear, hear what he has to say in John chapter 15, verse 11. 15, 11, yes. It says, I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. Yes. I have yes. told you this so yes. that my own joy may be in, in you, you and, and your joy be com complete. Yes. So the joy of Easter is Christ's own joy, placed in the hearts of those who believe and those who prepared during the Easter season. I'm not saying it isn't so for others, but I'm speaking about those who experience and always those who experience Easter have made some, some worthwhile preparation in, in, in um, the season of Lent. And last of all, I, let me just read the 14, chapter 14, verse 18. So it is Jesus' own joy. And he says, nobody will take that joy from you. It's my joy. I give to you my joy, I share with you. So, John 14, 14 18. 18. I will not leave you orphans, I will come back to you. Yes, you hear that? I will not leave you in, orphans, right? I will come back, come back to, to you. you. So, in death, people go away and leave the children behind, they become orphaned. <laughs> and Often, are often saddened by the departure of the parents, their loved ones, the ones to whom they find so great attachment. 
And yet Jesus is speaking of himself as a father or mother, a parent to whom all his followers have that intimate attachment. And his death is going to bring such sadness and sever from them his presence. And he says, but that is not going to last. I am going to return to you. You're not going to be offered for long. Mm -hmm. And because you're not going to be offered for long, your heart would be full of joy. But just remember that joy is a joy I bring to you on my return. That's really, really moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we have to explain the joy, then we could say that this joy is a manifestation of the actual divine presence of Jesus to those who prepare themselves and, and celebrated his resurrection, prepare themselves in, in the season of Lent, and therefore came with a strong belief of heart that he did rise from the dead to celebrate it as a fact, a fact of life. Not only his life, but the fact of our life who believe. So again, that the joy that, that one feels in uh, the season of, of, of Easter is a joy that is really a manifestation of the presence of Jesus. He has returned, not leaving those who believe in him as orphans. So he's a God who fulfills his promise. He said yeah. he's going to come back. Yes, and he did come back. But the disciples didn't understand oh, well, so many things. The disciples don't understand. <laughs> but when he so. came, when he, when he rose, um, that question was no longer in their heart. Well, when they experienced him. When they experienced him. <laughs> when they experienced him. So Jesus himself is the cause of that joy. Jesus himself is a cause of Easter joy. Mm -hmm. Now there's a big question that I, uh, I mm -hmm. let um, Mutina ask. <laughs> okay, so Jesus is the cause of that, of that joy. But you know, sometimes, Father, before we move on, some people, they, how is that cause, that joy sustained? Because I remember one priest saying, you don't get vexed during those days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't, you, don't, you don't lose it, you know, because, you know, the consciousness of that presence that is with you, mm -hmm. that the Lord is risen indeed, yes. not just a fact, um, the fact that he has risen, but also you too, as you were saying, because we have prepared well during the Lenten season, you too should have experienced some, as you said, some resurrection, a resurrection from something, like the Lord talk about a Passover, you know, like mm -hmm. from death to life, God raising you as well. Mm -hmm. So that that joy is not just something that happened to Jesus, which we celebrate, but also Jesus wants to share that joy, based on what I hear you say, with every person who believes. Yes, he shares that joy, which is the joy of his coming back to life, the Father fulfilling his own pledge to Jesus, bringing him back to life. And Jesus himself is quite happy, and he's sharing that happiness with all those who prepare themselves. And the preparation is necessary. Closer prayer life with him during the season of, um, of, of Lent not thinking, well, you know, prayers is boring or too long prayers. And people would pray and pray and pray. Pray constantly, he would say. Pray consistently, he would say. And the people who pray are also people who look at what should change in their lives. And then maybe where the feeling of the resurrection comes to give up in repentance, all those things that should not be in one's life. And then the newness of life, <laughs> the newness of life always comes from Jesus. He is the one who brings not just meaning, but life itself. 
as St. Paul would say, when we were buried, when we were baptized, we were buried in the tomb with him. And as he rose from the dead, we rise with him to newness of life. So there must be a transformation there. But all that transformation comes from him and from no one else. Even though we repent, we can't forgive ourselves, it is he who is forgiving us. And it is he who is placing on us a yearning for something to replace all that we repented of, himself that brings it. So here it is, that um, newness of life gives an experience of Jesus or allows us to know that Jesus, the risen Lord, has been with us or is with us during the season of Easter time. And that joy he brings, no one can take from us. So listeners and viewers, we are here with Father Patrick or Catholic Faith as we continue to share on the joy of the Easter season. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, Father, we'll look at the question of what is the Easter celebrations about or what is celebrated at Easter time to delve a bit more into, into our celebrations. We take a short break. <laughs> As we celebrate 50 years of independence, let us fortify our commitment to live church, build community and serve country by making a monthly pledge to support our church. Your contribution ensures the strength of our spiritual foundation and empowers us to continue serving the community through our ministry to schools, to our homes for the aged, to youth and to passing on our faith. Let us be in truth a community no longer dependent on handouts, but self-reliant, caring and generous. You can contact your parish priest for your monthly pledge envelopes or donate online at catholicgnd.org forward slash donate. Welcome back, listeners and viewers. It is uh, Easter. It is the octave of Easter. We continue to celebrate. As one person comment, we are an Easter people, and mm -hmm. an, alle an Alleluia is our song. Yes, you know, because that during so. that period, we were not singing the Alleluia, but we had mm -hmm. it intoned. We had it, you know, resounding. Mm -hmm. We had the Gloria resounding in the church. Mm -hmm. We had the bells ringing. You know, it means something is happening. It is, it's, it's not an ordinary night we celebrated. No. Not an ordinary moment, and it, you speak of this experience has to accompany us, mm -hmm. you know, accompany us, what God has done for us. So we really should not despair, because Christ is risen. Right, so. You know, and he is with us as he has promised. So let's look at the question of um, what is the Easter celebrations about? Viewers and listeners, very important question that is the question just asked. In Easter, first of all, we are celebrating the physical and body or the bodily rising of the and put it the, the, another way. In Easter time, we are actually celebrating the physical 
or the bodily rising, the, the rising of the body of Jesus from, the, from death. Mm -hmm. It is that body that died, and it is that body that rose to life. Easter is, part of Easter is just that. Jesus' body came back to life. Jesus, who was crucified on the cross and died on that cross on Good Friday, is brought back to life. And we would see that in Romans chapter 6, where by the Father's glory, he is brought back to life. Chapter 6, verses 4 and 9. Romans. 6, 4, and 9, yes. Chapter six. You have been taught that when we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. And nine. Verse nine says, Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. Yes. Notice in verse four, it says, he was raised to life by the Father's glory, mm -hmm. the power of the Father. Mm. The infinite power of the Father, limitless power of the Father. It is by that power Christ was raised to life, having died. And having been raised to life, as it were, he defeated death, and therefore he is victorious over death and cannot die anymore. As St. Paul would say that to us. Now we find supportive texts in Acts chapter 13, verse 33, verses 33b to 37, and in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 8. So they, these are supportive texts, and these are texts that you should read okay. in, um, in harmony with Romans 6 especially was small. By the Father's glory, Christ was raised to life. There are other texts, of course. As you read your scripture, you would come upon other cross-references. His resurrection from the dead is not about his spirit, therefore. And so many people seem to think. Okay. <laughs> the resurrection from the dead and this is, this, is, this is what we are discussing now, that very important question. What is the Easter celebration about? It is about the physical or the bodily resurrection from, of Jesus from the dead. It's not anything else. And making here the point, it's not a spirit. It's not his divinity. It's mm -hmm. not a soul as a human person. But it is his body. And I am, I'm making, making it very, very clear. It's not a spirit because the spirit cannot die. That is a part of God in us. God, the God of life. Mm -hmm. When God transferred to Adam, a life, Adam became a living being. Adam, let's say, acquired a soul, and that soul lived on. And everyone born, you see, from the stock of Adam, have a soul and carry the life of God. And the Catechism will say, we are like God in this way, 
because it is from him we receive life. Our souls cannot die because our souls are, it is there in our mm -hmm. being, we are very much like God, you know, mm -hmm. in the soul. Mm -hmm. And the soul cannot die. We learned that so, in the catechism. Right. So it is not the soul of Jesus that died. It is not the spirit that died. It is not Jesus. his spirit that died upon the cross of Calvary. But it is his body that died there. It was his body that was buried in the tomb. Yeah. In the tomb with, 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 where, where um, Joseph Arimathea and Nicodemus did uh, put in all the spices and so on to help to preserve the body as far as possible from decay. Mm. It is not the spirit, it is the body of Jesus. It was the spirit of, it was the body of Jesus that was enwrapped in the shroud. And it was the body of Jesus that came back to life on the first day of the week. We have there St. John chapter 19, verses 38 to 42, where Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea prepared the body of Jesus for burial. But in Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 to 4, you see the woman went there. It is the body of Jesus on the first day of the week that rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. I'm continuing. It is his dead body that was wrapped in a shroud in Matthew chapter 28, verses 20, uh, 57, 57 to, 58. to 59. 59. But after he rose from the dead, his body was no longer in that shroud. John chapter 7, John chapter 20, verses 3 to 7. Mm -hmm. The shroud was in the grave, mm -hmm. and his body was alive elsewhere. He left the shroud. Um, that is the, the, the cloth. That is, yes. The wrapping cloth, according to Jewish custom, the wrapping cloth of the dead. We really see that. We heard about it on Easter night. It did no harm to hear it again from chapter 20 of St. John, verses 3 to 7. Verses 3 to 7. And keep remembering what we are celebrating. So we do not have a, um, an idea because this is not simply an idea, <laughs> but it is the fact. It is the body of Jesus that came back to life, leaving the wrappings sure that is. enfolded him called the shroud behind. For the Acts of Routina to read for us. Yes, so it's John 20. John 20, verses 3 to 7. Okay. So Peter set out with the other disciples to go to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciples, running faster than Peter, reached the tomb first. He bent down and saw the linen cloths lying on the ground, but did not go in. Simon Peter, who was following, now came up, went right into the tomb, saw the linen cloths on the ground, and also the cloth that had been over his head. This was not with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciples, who had reached the tomb first, also went in. He saw and he believed. Yes. So, they witnessed the linen cloth that wrapped his body there. But the body was not there. Why? Because the body oh, no. is alive. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the resurrection of Jesus, we are talking about his bodily resurrection from the dead. Very important. We're not talking about anything else. Mm -hmm. 
Whether we want to deny it or don't want to deny it, the scriptures explain that to us. We can see that there. This is, this is what is meant by the resurrection or rising from the dead. The body of Jesus was killed on the cross, but by the Father's power, by the Father's glory, that body was raised back to life. Mm -hmm. So it was so in it, that resurrected. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it was in that resurrected body that Jesus appeared several times. You see, according to Acts of the Apostles, for 40 days to the apostles. He spoke with them, allowed himself to be touched by them, which is his risen body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the body that was dead, now restored to life. Mm. He ate with them, and he ate for them to see and believe that he was not a ghost, <laughs> but it was his body among them. And we would see that this is Sunday coming. We have um, John, um, it used to be Doubt and Thomas Sunday. Um. <laughs> All over the world, you speak about Thomas because that was the, that was the, um, the gospel, gospel highlighted. Laying emphasis on the bodily resurrection of Jesus. Thomas couldn't believe. But well, not only he, the other disciples didn't believe until they saw him. Mm -hmm. And Thomas did not see him within the first eight days. And he said, unless I could see him, I won't believe. And not only I wouldn't, I, I don't want, only want to see it. I want to feel his heat. I want to feel his body, real, yes. the real body of Jesus. I want to put my finger in the holes of his hand, and I want to push my hand into his side where the lance was pushed and pierced. I want to feel him. <laughs> I want to feel his body. So we read that, the Acts to read that. In John 20, John 20 27, 20, 27 to 28. 20, 27 to 28. Yes. Then he spoke to Thomas, put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Yes. You see, so, <laughs> so, so we, have, we have Thomas there. Um, <clears throat> unless he see, he saw Jesus, he would not believe. But it, he didn't only want to see him. Remember what I'm saying? You read he the to text before that. He had to touch him. You want to feel. He had to feel. <laughs> and ask um, Rutina to read as well 20. Chapter 20, verse 19. Yes, John 20, 19. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his feet and his side. Let me take that over. Mm -hmm. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. Why did he show them his hands and his side? <laughs> it's a body. It's, 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 it's. He showed them his body. Or we'll take another, another text. Is this sign from St. Luke? Which one is Luke? 34. I'm um, um, 24. St. Luke 24, 36 to 43. So Jesus showed them his hands. Look here are the, 
pieces of the nails and he showed them his side that was pierced. So, it's Luke 24. Yes, Luke 36, 24, 36 to 43. To 43. They were all talking about all this when he himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. In a state of alarm and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he said, why are you so agitated? And why are these doubts rising in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. Yes, it is I indeed. Touch me and see for yourselves. A ghost has no flesh and bones as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. The joy was so great that they still could not believe it, mm -hmm. and they stood there dumbfounded. So he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they offered him a piece of grilled fish, which he took and ate before their eyes. He invited them to feel him, and he says, You could see I have flesh and blood which a ghost does not have. It is his body. It doesn't matter what you have. Mm. It is his body. Jesus is proving to them it is his body that rose from the dead. Yes. And, and, and in that text, he is eating eating piece of fish. So he has teeth, <laughs> and he has a bowl in which the fish should go to prove to them it was his body, sisters and brothers, and nothing else. If we want to speak about this body, the transformed body, what, but it is his physical body that rose from the dead. And then Jesus is going all out to prove that that is so. All out. All right? You have a, 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 um, a supportive text it is to that fact of his resurrection, of his body, that Peter attested. We ate with him, <laughs> we drank with him. In Acts chapter 10, verses 39 to 41. We ate with him. We drank with him. So we could tell you we saw him and it's actually was he himself, his body that we saw, or nothing else. Not a ghost, not a spirit. It was he himself. So when the church is speaking about the resurrection of Jesus, it is not pulling a fast one on anybody. Mm -hmm. Not pulling a fast one on anybody. The church actually wants us to believe that Jesus' body is what rose from the dead. That's what is celebrated, the core of what is celebrated. Life restored to a dead body. Yes. So first, so first of all, it is the resurrection of Jesus' body that, that, um, celebration that of the celebration of Easter is about the restoration of life, the resurrection of life. To Jesus' body. That is what Easter celebration is about. Okay. God, by his divine power and glory, brought Jesus back to life from death. Truly, mm -hmm. one of the greatest mysteries of our Catholic faith. God, our Father, God, the God of our faith, God of our faith is the only God to give life and to restore it. Amen. If God is capable of giving life, God is capable of restoring it. That is a fact that is proven here. Mm -hmm. He give the life and it is lost. Mm -hmm. Is powerless to restore it? The answer is no. <laughs> he gave life where life was not. And when life is lost, he has power to put it back. <laughs> that is what is celebrated here. Yes. 
in the resurrection. No one can take that power from him. He is the God of life. He is the source of all life. All life, wherever there is life. God is the source of life. So that's what we are celebrating. It's the first thing in the, re in, in the resurrection um, or, or, or Easter celebration. That's the first thing we are celebrating. The bodily resurrection of Jesus and the power of the infinite, magnificent God, the God of life, who has power to give life and power to restore it. That's what we celebrate. That's the first thing we celebrate in the resurrection. Okay, so we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, we look at the second, the second um, aspect of our Easter celebration. We'll be right back, listeners and viewers. If you wish to call, you can do so, 435-0143. Maybe your eyes have just been opened to the stark reality that it is the body of Jesus that has been raised and probably thinking of some figment in our minds <laughs> or something else. So this is very important for us to, to ponder. We will we'll be right back after a short break. As we celebrate 50 years of independence, let us fortify our commitment to live church, build community and serve country by making a monthly pledge to support our church. Your contribution ensures the strength of our spiritual foundation and empowers us to continue serving the community through our ministry to schools, to our homes for the aged, to youth and to passing on our faith. Let us be in truth a community no longer dependent on handouts but self-reliant, caring and generous. You can contact your parish priest for your monthly pledge envelopes or donate online at Catholic gnd.org forward slash donate Welcome back, listeners and viewers, to our Catholic Faith with Father Patrick Alexander. Today we're talking Easter. We're talking the reason for the season of Easter. And the Father has wonderfully explained the first reason, the essence of this celebration, is the raising of Jesus' body. It was not a ghost, and we had all the scriptures to support what he is sharing, that Jesus has the power to take, to, to give life and to restore life. And we saw that as happened in his body and all the manifestation, the encounters that the disciples had with him as he, they touched him. He ate with them. He drank with them. They knew it was not a ghost. And I hope <laughs> we are convinced it was not a ghost that was raised from the dead. Now we look at the second part of the, um, the reason for the celebration. And we should be convinced it's not a ghost that raised from the dead because the ghost cannot die. <laughs> Spirit here. Right? Yes. The ghost cannot die. You see, when we talk about possession, people are possessed, ask the, ask the exorcist when they are, ex, ex, when they are removing, exorcising the, the ghost or the spirit from people who are possessed. Quite often they call the names or they say who they are. Mm -hmm. And quite often, this is the soul of somebody. Somebody. Mm. They can't die. The ghosts can't die. The resurrection is not about the ghosts. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
resurrection is of the body. Regardless of what you have, it's of the body. When, when the body comes back to life, it is in a transformed state. It is still the body and nothing else. The body of Jesus was not in the tomb, and they was experiencing him all about, you know. So it is something like, you know, a phantom or spirit. <laughs> now, it is his body. And the scriptures prove it. It is his body and nothing else. Okay. There is some, there is the other, another part of the celebration, another reason for the celebration. And that is, <clears throat> this celebration of Easter is about the Son of God. The Jesus who underwent extreme suffering by crucifixion and died on the cross of Calvary and came back to life in the resurrection by the Father's power and glory. This Jesus is no one less than and no one else but the Son of God. As we are celebrating at Easter, the Son of God died and came back to life. Mm -hmm. The Son of God. Very, very important for Easter. It is not just about anybody, not my resurrection, this one resurrection. And all, all that is, it is just by a kind of, <laughs> I almost tempted to say hallucination. It is not our placing ourselves there. There are so many different kinds of spirituality that wants us to, to um, rise with Jesus. St. Paul speaks about our rising with Jesus by inference. It's a symbolic rising from the dead. It's spiritual rising from the dead on our part. But actually rising from the dead, coming from the tomb. The actual thing is Jesus. Jesus himself, his body. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the Son of God. Make no mistake about it. You're not talking about a prophet here. We are not talking about some special being, special human being that, um, that you know, for, for whatever reason, underwent death and so on. No, this is God's son. This is God's son. And this is God's son who is identified to Mary, who God chose to be his mother at his coming into the world. And God chose, God is identifying who this son she will bear is to her, even before she conceived him. So let us listen to Luke chapter 1, verses 30. To 32a and 35. In Luke chapter, chapter one. 1, verses 30 to 32a, not the whole of 32, but part of it. Okay, 13. Yeah, 30 to 32a. So we take it from here. Um, Okay. But the angel said to her, that's where, Father? Yeah, go ahead. Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son, and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. All right. So he will be called the Son of the Most High. Who is the Most High? Ask the Rastas, because we hear that <laughs> expression from them. Who is the most high? Is there anyone higher than God? There's none higher than God. 
So Jesus is the son of the Most High. But this is quite, this is, this is clarified even if there is a doubt in our mind in verse 35. Okay. 35 says, The Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will cover you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. The child will be holy and will be called Son of God because God is the Most High. Jesus is the son of the Most High. And Mary was chosen to bear him, to bring him forth into the world. So that's the first reference we have to who Jesus is, who he who died on the cross mm -hmm. and rose from the dead, who he really is. His body that Mary bore Mm -hmm. is the body that was raised to life. Yes. All right, mm -hmm. gone to that extent so that you wouldn't think of phantom anymore or, <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or something strange in the mind, but I don't have a word for it. It's the body that Mary bore. She gave birth to that body. All right? Mm -hmm. We continue to see at Jesus' baptism, God revealed who he is in his body. God revealed this publicly at the Jordan. And the persons who were there at the Jordan, while Jesus was baptized, and John himself, who baptized Jesus, heard who Jesus is. The voice from heaven is saying, this is my son. <laughs> my son. God is identifying him among all the people who John was baptizing. Mm -hmm. Though he is among you, he is very special. He is the son of God. That is what that text of St. Matthew, chapter 1 of St. Matthew, verse 16 is saying, verses 16 to 17 is saying, as well as Mark chapter 1, verses 1, nine. Um, um, 9 to 11. So Matthew, Matthew one. 1, 16 to 17, and Mark chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Still later, God revealed to the disciples Jesus himself. He's revealing to the disciples, uh, chosen by Jesus himself as his companions, to share his mission. Jesus chose those disciples. And here, the Father is revealing to those disciples who this person they were accompanying is whose mission they were sharing. This person whose companions they were, who is he? We read about that <clears throat> in um, Mark, well, let's read it in Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 to 5. But you would also see it on the screen there, Mark chapter Mark chapter, uh, Mark chapter 9, verses 2, verses 2 to 4 and 7. It is, it's a, the transfiguration. What happened at that theophany, as it were? So you want me to read Matthew 17? Matthew 17, 1 to 5, because it's the same as Mark. Okay. Matthew 17, 1 to 5. Six days later... Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up to a high mountain where they could be alone. There in their presence he was transfigured. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared to them. They were talking with him. Then Peter spoke to Jesus. Lord, he said, it is wonderful for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, 
one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when suddenly a bright cloud covered them with shadow, and from the cloud there came a voice which said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Listen to him. My thanks. So there's a voice from heaven, again identifying Jesus to the disciples who were with him. Who is this person? This is the Son of God. And they must not take him for granted. They must listen to him, pay attention to what he says, carry out what they say. Don't be with him as a companion and not know who he is and what he's about. So God is identifying here by all that brightness who Jesus is. He's transformed. He's shown in glory. God alone lives in that kind of light, glorious light. And the Jews of themselves would know that. God lives in inapproachable light. And Jesus shone with that approachable light. Inapproachable light. His body shone like that, not his soul. <laughs> not his spirit. His whole body shone like that. God is identifying. God is revealing to the disciples that Jesus is his son. He's the son of God. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Peter confirms that in 2 Peter, verses, um, uh, um, chapter, second, one, cha chapter 1, verses 16, 16 to 18. 18. Do you I try to stay yes. with the text. Yes. The verse. 16. It was not any cleverly invented myths that we were repeating when we brought you the knowledge of the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We had seen his majesty for ourselves. He was honored and glorified by God the Father when the sublime glory itself spoke to him and said, This is my son, the beloved. He enjoys my favor. Yes, so here Peter is attesting to what he himself experienced. He said, what we are saying to you is not, is not a myth. We didn't invent this. We are witnessing to you, we are testifying to you what we underwent in our own bodily experience. His transformation and that transformation had a declaration with it. That is the transformation of Jesus' body and a declaration coming from heaven. This is the Son of God. This is my Son. Verse 18 said, we heard this ourselves, spoke from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Holy mountain, that's the mountain of transfiguration. Okay. Now St. Paul's letter to the Philippians confirm who Jesus is. He died on the cross in humility, but God raised him high. God raised him up and gave him the name above all other names. And he is to be venerated by all. St. Paul says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that he is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. But St. Paul would begin by saying, Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not count his equality with God something to be grasped at. That is how he begins that, that letter to the Philippians. Mm -hmm. Though Jesus, um, um, if, if, if um, like, yes, routine, I can find it. Yes, yeah. Philippians 2, 5 to 11. Yes. It says, in oh, your I, mind... I, I wouldn't want the whole thing. But okay, so which... Yes, go, go, go ahead. In go your on. minds, you must be the same as Christ Jesus. His state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, 
but emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave and became as men are and being as all men are, he was humbler yet even to accepting death, death on a cross. You see, you hear that. Though he, his state was divine, it's only God that is divine. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't cling to his divinity as his father is divine, nor the Holy Spirit divine. He said, well, you know, I am divine, and why, why I have to undergo it? He never did that. Mm -hmm. He assumed the condition of a slave. His body is what underwent the cross. His body. His state was divine. He's son of God. But this son of God was crucified very humbly submitting to death like a slave. Try to remember when we celebrate Easter, Easter is about the son of God. It is his body, we saw first. Now we see it. it is he who Mary bore. It is he who is revealed and St. Paul would have come to, um, to that story from the testimony from the other apostles because St. Paul was not one of those on Mount Tabor. And I must say that when we think about it, sisters and brothers, St. Paul was a Jew. And the Jews, <laughs> the Jews don't believe that Jesus is no son of God. They say, no, he's blaspheming. But just imagine, this Jew, this rabbi, <laughs> could make that movement in faith, not denying anymore that Jesus is divine. I could write it, could say it to the church. He is the Son of God. That of itself should be supportive evidence for us who are non-Jews and believe in Christ. A Jew converted, and converted by what? <laughs> by Jesus himself, by, by Jesus' own appearance to him. Mm -hmm. He was con dumbfounded and con and <laughs> confounded. So Easter celebration is about these two facts. These two facts, the body of Jesus, and Jesus is the Son of God. St. Paul's letter to the Philippians confirms it, as I said, and St. Peter says why Jesus, the Son of God, undertook the shame, the, the, um, the shame, the, undertook the, the shame and the, the shameful death the shameful death of the cross. See why he undertook the shameful death of the cross? And that was to bear our faults in his own body. Mm -hmm. Heal us of our sins and lead us back to God. We see that in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. The Acts routine, to read it first. In First Peter chapter two, chapter one, chapter one, First Peter chapter two, sorry, First Peter chapter two, verses twenty-one to twenty-four. Okay. This, in fact, is what you were called to do, because Christ suffered for you and left an example for you to follow the way He took. He had not done anything wrong, and there had been no perjury in His mouth. He was insulted and did not retaliate with insults. When he was ta tortured, he made no threats, but he put his trust in the righteous judge. He was bearing all faults in his own body on the cross so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to read holiness. again. Read again. He was bearing our... Falls in his own body. body. His body 
on the cross. It is not a phantom on the cross. But it's not, not something, it's not the lodges, uh, well, uh, um, Jesus, Jesus didn't want to go to painful death of the cross. It, you know, it, all, all these are theories people have. St. Paul, St. Peter, the first pope said, he's bearing our faults in his own body. The sinful part of us, he's bearing it to put an end to it on our behalf. Mm -hmm. The body of Jesus comes back. Mm -hmm. Continue to read. So he was bearing our faults in his own body on the cross so that we might die to our faults and live for holiness. Through his wounds, you have been healed. You had gone astray like sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. So Peter attests. In fact, Jesus, Son of God, is the one and only name by which we can be saved. He has the one and only name by which we can be saved. And we see that in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. There is no other name by which, very important for Easter, our salvation is achieved by no one else but the Son of God, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So Acts 4.12. Acts 4.12. For of all the names in the world given to men, this is the only one by which we can be saved. Yes. Remember, his name is Jesus. And who is Jesus? He is the Son of God. That is the name Mary was given to call him by. <laughs> when you have him, call him Jesus. Oh, who is this Jesus? Mary told he is the Son of God. He's the Most High. And therefore, there is no salvation outside of him. <laughs> He's the only one by whom we come to salvation. As what we celebrate at Easter. Yes. And so to believe that Jesus, who died upon the cross and rose from the dead, is the Son of God, is essential because it is by this belief we will have life, which is really eternal life to be saved. Believe in this, says St. John, in the Gospel, brings us eternal life. See, the whole reason I'm writing the Gospel is that you may believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And I mean, it's somewhere in um, John, John 20. John 20. Okay. So John 20, 30 to 31. Listeners and viewers, that will not be on your screen because uh, uh, that was not posted. Yes. But listen very well and you, you have the quotation. Quote it again. Yes. So John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. That's, a, that's the second thing we celebrate in Easter. Having life through Jesus, the Son of God. So our salvation is not achieved, as is said, by a prophet, neither by an angel or anybody else, but the Son of God. It is his body that rose from the dead. Now, finally, and I'm trying to, try to go quickly, I would not actually routine <laughs> to quote any, any to read, text to there for, for, for us. 
Father, you just, I will just refer to the text. So finally, the celebration of Easter is significant for all mankind. All mankind, that is all members of the human race. This significance should bring joyful hope to all without exception. And therefore, when the reason for that hope is known, <coughs> no one can prevent himself or herself from rejoicing about it. When we know the reason for the hope, joyful hope. And the reason for this is that God has sent his son to die and rise from the dead <coughs> that all might be saved through him. All might be saved through him. Not simply, <laughs> not simply one race of people or, 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 or one class of people. <coughs> All might be saved through him. I may have to take a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. <coughs> I have to take a break at this time. We'll be right back. Yes, all might be saved through him. Saved from the consequence of Adam's sin. That sin was the sin of disobedience. I would say Adam and Eve. I could say that because that is so. It was short, Adam's sin. For that consequence has passed on all born into this world without exception, except Jesus himself. Jesus was born without the, the, the sin of Adam. Of course, this saving act of God, through Jesus his son, is for the benefit of all, all peoples. For Jesus has, has restored God's grace of everlasting life for all to inherit. He has restored the grace of everlasting life thrown away by Adam for all to inherit. And the comparison is made between Adam and Jesus in Romans chapter 5, verses 11 and verses 12 to 21. And he says, we won't read it, okay. but you must read it at home. Romans chapter 5, verses 12 to 21. Death came into the world through one man, <laughs> and death has passed upon everybody who was born. But so through life of the resurrection, or through the resurrection, has come through one man, Jesus Christ. And it's the burden of that text. It means that <coughs> all peoples, regardless of race or nationality, are made beneficiaries of Jesus' death and resurrection. And you see that in Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 35. Peter is speaking in the house of Cornelius. God has no favorites. People of any nationality, and therefore people of any race, is made it possible for them to have eternal life through belief. Moreover, as Jesus himself rose from death, even like, even in like, I'll just read that again. Moreover, as Jesus himself rose from dead, from, the, from death, even in like manner, the resurrection has been made possible for everyone. Everyone for whom he laid down his life 
and rose from the dead will rise again as he rose from the dead in the body. Mm. And so I in the church helps us to profess. I believe in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. When we celebrate Easter, we are celebrating as well a pointer or reference to our own resurrection from the dead. And our resurrection, our own resurrection from the dead, it was proclaimed by Jesus Christ himself as a reality for all. John chapter 5, verses 22 to 29. John chapter 5, verses 22 to 29. And then, um, while, while I look at the other text, I'll, I'll just ask um, Rutina to read that. John chapter 5, verses 22 to 29. Jesus himself is a um, Okay. Should I go ahead? Yes. Okay. So John chapter 5, 22 yeah. to 29. For the Father judges no one, no one. He has entrusted all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son as they honor the Father. Whoever refuses honor to the Son refuses honor to the Father who sent him. I tell you most solemnly, whoever listens to my words and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life. Without being brought to judgment, he has passed from death to life. I tell you most solemnly, the hour will come, in fact, it is here already, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and all who hear it will live. Notice what Jesus is saying. <laughs> the hour is coming when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of, of God. God. <laughs> Jesus himself is saying it. And those who hear it will live. live. They are going to come back to life. The dead is going to hear. Yes. The dead is going to resurrect. Continue. Mm -hmm. For the Father, who is the source of life, has made the Son the source of life. Please come back to that again. Jesus is his Son, so he shares the power of life given with him. And because he is the Son of Man, has appointed him supreme judge. Do not be surprised at this, for the hour is coming when the dead will leave their graves at the sound of his voice. Those who did good will rise again to life, and those who did evil to condemnation. Thank you. So, listeners and viewers, look at that. John chapter 5, verses 22 to 29. Read it. Jesus is proclaiming the Son of God is going to wake awaken the dead, they will hear his voice. And, he's going to, and uh, of course, they will come to life. And when they come to life, he's going to judge. I don't want to bring in all the judgment mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. But this is what we celebrate. What Jesus himself proclaimed. Our own resurrection. At Easter time. We have supportive, supporting texts from... 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 4, and 13 to 14, and 20 to 22. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 to 4, 13 to 14, and 20 to 22. There is St. Paul. He has given an answer to those who are arguing against, against the general resurrection, people coming back to life after death. Read it carefully. Okay. All peoples are not only redeemed <coughs> by the death and resurrection of Jesus, Son of God, but through the same Jesus, all will be raised to life again. 
that that um that, that they, they may have, have eternal, eternal life. life. All will be raised to life again, mm -hmm. that they, they may have, have eternal life. And sisters and brothers, if nothing else <laughs> is worth celebrating, certainly this is worth rejoicing about in this season of Easter time. Amen. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, God surprises me all the time. And mm -hmm. I think this has been a very in-depth teaching, you know, not just a frivolous um, discourse on why we celebrate. Because it's so important for us to be helped to understand the depth of the faith that we, God has given to us. And just to remind us of this Easter season, it's a season. And as Father said, it goes on for seven weeks, 50 days. Uh, the first uh, 40 days will take us to the ascension, but the season continues on to Pentecost. So we are expected to grow in our faith in these times. To refer again to the text that um, Father has cited for us to help us to deeper understand the three main aspects, the three main reasons that he has given to us today why we celebrate Easter. Mm -hmm. The first one is the that Jesus' body, body is what rose from the dead. Is what rose from the dead. <laughs> you, body yes, Father, don't want us to miss this. <laughs> it was not a ghost, because mm -hmm. a ghost cannot die. The body of Jesus, the physical body of Jesus, that took its DNA and everything from the Blessed Virgin Mary, that is the body that was raised from the dead. Yeah. Also, we need to remember why we celebrate this season, because Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is real. He's not a ghost. He appeared several times to his apostles, um, especially Thomas. You remember he asked him to touch him, and Thomas would not believe until he put his finger in, until he saw, not just with his eyes, but he wanted to touch. And Jesus allowed himself to be touched by, by, Simon, by um, Thomas. Mm -hmm. And perhaps there are hearts that are wanting that experience too. <laughs> but the same scripture says, blessed is he who has not, not seen, seen but yet believe. So it invites us to deep faith so that Jesus is the Son of God and it has been proven by the support of sacred scripture. And it's the only name by which man can, anyone can be saved. You, anyone. It's the only name, the name of Jesus, by which we can be saved. And also to know that God made this possible by sending Jesus to take on a body like ours, to take on our own sinful nature that we inherited from Adam, and to redeem us in that body. And so we are invited, really, to be disposed to welcome in this good news in this Easter tide, that it would not just be a fleeting moment. The church emphasizes the centrality of the paschal mystery of Jesus Christ, his suffering, death, and resurrection from the dead, so that we can have life, eternal life. And we begin by living this new life by that the Lord. Resurrection. By our own. Resurrection. Yes, by our own <laughs> resurrection, that we see really that we too are called to experience this resurrection, to leave our old selves. If you remember the night, um, maybe in some of the churches there was baptism, in others there were not, but we do remember that this water signifies somehow the, grave, um, the, the death the grave, uh, in the and grave. Death. We enter into that water and the old man is left there. That could do nothing else but sin and we are raised to new life because the, the catechumen, the one who is to be accepted in the church has been given white, a new mm -hmm. uh, white, which signifies this new yeah. life that yeah. God invites all of us to live. Sinless life, immaculate yes. life. Yes. A life without sin. Yes. He has the power, as you said, to restore mm -hmm. this life, yeah. okay? So we just bless the Lord for the richness of our faith. We thank you, Father 
for taking the time and the, the pains, the patience to help us to come to this understanding. It's a long journey and it is not over by one program or two programs, but we must have that desire within our heart to grow, to learn and to be disposed, you know, for what God prepares for us. So again, it's a wonderful Easter tide and we invite Father to close us with a prayer and do join us. We are happy to have Mass celebrated um, in a while with Father Patrick on this Easter Tuesday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, through the resurrection of your Son, you have given joy to the world. And we beseech you that through his mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, we too may attain to the joys of the resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter to you, and thanks for participating. Do leave your comments. We don't have time to take the questions, but please leave your comments. Yes. God bless. Yes. Have a happy Easter season. Thank you, Father, and thank you to all our listeners and our viewers. God bless you. Continue to, as this um, participant says, we are an Easter people who have an Alleluia song. So let's keep singing and remain in the light of the resurrection. Thank you.